Hi everybody, it's Sarah, the Unschooling Mom, and today I'm going to talk to you about our curriculum. And we're going to start here, we're just going to start right in with our homeschool planner here. Excuse the glare of the lights. I did this cover um, of a binder that is not the binder that comes with the um, curriculum that we use. What I do is I take out six weeks at a time out of the curriculum that we use. We use sunlight. And since there's 36 weeks in sunlight, um, I only do six weeks at a time and I put it in this binder. What I like about sunlight is that when you go to each week, if I can get this turned, it goes through each day, day one, two, three, four, and five, and uh, these are a four or, f or five day schedule. So it can be an optional five day schedule if you want to. Um, it goes one, through th one, two, three, four, five, and it gives you your Bible, history, geography, read alouds, which is where you read the book aloud to your child, their reader, which is what they read to themselves. It gives you a space to write other subjects such as math and science. If you hear something rattling around, that's my cat playing with her ball. She's going into uh, fast to cat mode, we call it. And then it goes into suggested ones like spelling and uh, handwriting, grammar, mechanics, and vocabulary. Creative expression is something they do provide, so that would be language arts. And so they give you all the assignments that you need for the whole week. Then you go on to the next few pages and it gives you the assignments, it walks you through the assignments for everything um, for history, geography, Bible, language arts, readers, and read aloud. So you just go to that day, say um, it's day one and it's the read aloud for the Golden Goblet and you're on chapter one. It goes through the vocabulary, in this case, case since you're on week one it even tells you how to teach the vocabulary it goes through the vocabulary it gives you discussion questions that you can go through and this is where I get the questions to put in uh, my son's notebooks so that I can grade his comprehension so this is what we use for history and geography and language arts and I'll show you a little bit of the language arts I'm going to skip over here this is one of the worksheets for language arts, and in this case, uh, every week has a dictation passage. Excuse me for my hand shaking. Uh, every week has a dictation passage, so the first day of the week, he looks at it, he, I read it to him, he reads it, he looks for words that might be a trouble for him to spell, um, special punctuation and all that, and on Friday, he will um, have that read to him and he will write it for me. And then they go into mechanics of things, and then there will be writing assignments. So that's sunlight for history, geography, and language arts for that portion. Now, to fill in the rest of language arts, we'll get to the rest of these books, don't worry. We're doing wordly wise, I always want to say worldly wise, wordly wise 3000 book six. And this is um, recommended for seventh graders. This is for vocabulary. So we're doing book six. Um, it's pretty intense. The words can be um, kind of difficult. And so each one starts with the vocabulary list. And then it goes through more and more complicated um, assignments until you get to the point where you have to read a passage and then answer questions using those vocabulary words. And the passage has the vocabulary words in it. The other thing that we're doing, and I mentioned this in our work boxes video, in my uh, organization video, is we're doing an interactive notebook this year. And we're doing Casey Morris's best ever reading and grammar interactive notebooks and so with reading whoops so far we have done inferences and main idea which has been great 
And then with grammar, we just started grammar because I realized my seventh grader still is having trouble with things like adjectives and adverbs and all that. So we are doing interactive notebooks for language arts. And so all that so far has been history, geography, and language arts. Okay, so for the actual history geography part, they have several books that he has to read. So he, this is a very reading intensive curriculum, Sunlight is, and it's also a Christian-based curriculum. So you'll see, like we said, that there's Bible study and all that. So um, we have the story of the world, which is history for the classical child. There's two volumes of this. It's written by Susan Weiss Bauer, and it's a very good book. It's not written just as a history book, it's written almost like a story book as well. And so my son has really enjoyed reading this book so far. So The Story of the World, A History for the Classical Child is one book that he's reading. The Kingdom Strikes Back is one of the biblical books that they use um, in this curriculum. And then one of the the largest and heaviest books, and he hates to have to get this out to look at it, but it's the Kingfisher History Encyclopedia. And um, this is interesting because it is not written from a Christian perspective. And so what it does is it gives us the chance to discuss um, the way other people see things um, from a non-biblical per perspective. I cannot say that perspective. Um, and it gives us discussion points, and that's um, very important that he sees um, both sides of the coin and that we can discuss our views and our beliefs and the beliefs of others. And yet it's also still a very good history book, and it's a very good encyclopedia. So that's his big, heavy, very thick, very heavy book that he uses for history. Okay, that's all that, um, no, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. Sunlight also does Bible study. So he does Bible reading, and then he also uses this children's Bible field guide. He reads a chapter a week in this, and uh, this is kind of like an almanac about the Bible. So this is a really interesting book. I'm getting a nasty glare off of my lamp there. I really need better lighting for this. So this is, uh, and it's got lots of good questions to think about at the end of each chapter. And then what Sunlight is really well known for is, is the amount of reading that you have to do. And this is just one example. Right now he's doing um, The Golden Goblet. He's gonna start reading this starting on Monday. And uh, he just finished Mara the Sun, uh, excuse me, Ma Mara, Daughter of the Nile. And now he's going to read the Golden Goblet. He's reading um, Best Love Poems right now. And he's soon going to be reading about um, Greek myths. And so that should be a good book. So there are books that the parents read to the child and books that the child reads on their own. And this is actually one that was supposed to be a read aloud that I turned into a reader because I thought that he'd prefer to read this himself. So that's the end of what Sunlight um, chooses for us, aside from Wordly Wise, which I added in the interactive notebook. Um, for science, I chose Apologia or Apologia. I'm not sure how it's pronounced, but Exploring Creation with General Science. This is basically what's been recommended for middle schoolers or uh, seventh or eighth graders. This is the first time he's had a really um, a real textbook situation for science so this has been a real eye-opener for him he's going to have some difficult tests uh, there's study guides things like that but what's really nice with this book is that it comes with this humongous notebook and the notebook is divided into sections there's the section where it's just a notebook where you answer questions um, talks about different subjects and things. But then um, there's experiments that you do and it has an area for lab reports. 
and it talks about how to do a lab report and then it has for every experiment an area where you fill in a lab report so that's really cool and then as you get ready for a test there's a section of summaries that's optional and then there it's basically study guides for for each test and so this notebook is kind of there's my finger again bye this is basically um, a, another study guide for those who might need um, an extra help before a, before a test. So it's kind of like a pretest. And so that's what we chose for science this year um, for the science curriculum. And then finally, we have math. And we've been using teaching textbooks for the last couple of years. He is in pre-algebra this year. And this one comes with a CD, a CD-ROM, and the CD-ROM teaches the lesson. The lessons are in the book, but the CD-ROM does teach the lesson as well. Even though he could read the lesson, it teaches it in more of a visual manner, and then he comes and he does the exercise in the book, and then I grade it, and um, he gets a grade in his, in my um, computer grading. And I think I'll have to show that in another video and give a proper link to uh, the grading software I use. What I didn't realize when I bought this one is this is not version 2. Mo all the other ones we've had, you could do through the CD-ROM and it would grade it for you. Now my sleeve's in the way. This is just turning out to be great. I'm doing, I'm a great videographer. I'm so good. Um, the other ones graded it for you through the CD-ROM. This one does not. It just gives the answers. That's the great the part about the CD-ROM, though, is if he gets something wrong, I can have him look at the CD-ROM and it will show him how to do the answer. And that's great because I have a um, K-6 through teaching license. Well, I don't have the license anymore, but I have a K-6 through teaching degree. And uh, pre-algebra is out of my league. And so I needed a um, math curriculum that would be able to teach him what I can't. So that's the curriculum we're using this year for a seventh grader. In case you were curious, if you have any questions, put them down in the comments section. If you like the video, hit that like button and please subscribe. And my name again is Sarah and I am the only schooling mother, mommy, mom, wife, chief cook and bottle washer. We will see you again in another video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.